10th December 1579. This is the day Paulus Hector Meyer was hanged for the charge of embezzlement. His family unsuccessfully tried to secure him a pardon, a way to atone by fighting against the Turks. This, however, was denied. What Maya leaves behind is a collection of fencing manuals, some of his own making. He's a divisive figure in the modern historical fencing, or HEMA community. Some see genuine value in his collection of plays for a variety of different weapons. Others see his manuals as just a bag of tricks. One aspect, however, catches everybody's eyes. His collection of exotica. Mars exotica are made up of plays for the scythe, the thrasher flail, the peasant staff, and most important for this video, the sickle. Meyer shows us 16 plays, or Stücke, for the sickle. Most fencers see the sickle as merely an exotic fun thing to do. That Maya included it to show off to his rich friends, or just to flex his wealth. I do not believe this. Now I want to preface that I am in no way believing the notion that Maya included the sickle because gentlemen of his time had duels with sickles. No no, this is 100% not the case. I do however think that there is more to this than meets the eye. My own personal journey with the sickle started how it does for everyone else. I thought it would be fun. How cool is it to learn how to fence with sickles, right? Only through a one and a half year deep dive me and my clubmate have embarked upon have we seen that sickle is actually a working system. It's not just a simple flex. When I first completely read Maya's work, I saw that he would agree with me. To him the sickle falls under the same category as the dagger, something to use in earnest. Something to use to defend yourself with. And that is not the only thing that connects a sickle to the dagger. You will see similar plays between sickle and dagger, and the sickle fences like a dagger more than it does a sword. This is where I think one of the first misconceptions comes from that people have about the sickle. They fence it like you would a sword, trying to get hand snipes in instead of doing one thing that Meyer always shows in every sickle play. Establishing control. You hook a limb, you take a sickle with your sickle, you grab an elbow, you hook a leg. Maya shows all this as either an endpoint of a play or as a point from where you can cut at the opponent with your sickle. And this makes sense. You can't really parry with a sickle as you do with a sword, and the shape and serration of the sickle perfectly suits itself to hook into something and grab. I said earlier that the sickle was never used in a duel between gentlemen, and this is true. That is also not why Maya included it. I have a hypothesis that I would like to get into. Two, in fact. One, Maya included all these peasant weapons because he was a child during the Peasants' War. This might have left an impact on him, and he might have learned about it. Two, Maya did as he did with most of his plays in his manuals. He copied it from somewhere else. There's a lot of things that speak for point two. We do have some of the manuals that Maya has copied from. We also have established that Sickle and Dagger share a connection. Therefore, it is likely, in my opinion, that Meyer copied the dagger part out of a manual or unknown house booth that contains some extra stuff at the end. Something akin of, you can also use these techniques with the following items. Meyer was also a fencer himself, and his manual was written for fencers. He might have found a way himself to put the dagger place into the sickle. I do not see credence that Meyer had it included to flex, it does not really make any sense. Sure, he does comment that he spent a lot of money on this manual. But flexing with a sickle? This is especially weird, because apart from his scythe, the other exotica are not really exotica. The thrasher flail was a weapon used by the city guard, as seen in Hund and Zutor, and the peasant staff is just a stick that you pick off of the ground to defend yourself. And considering the sickle is put into the same category as the dagger, I do think he put it there for an earnest reason. Peasant uprisings were happening every so often, after all. Now the straw man that lives rent free in my head might ask, but if the sickle was never used in real life duels, what value does it hold for a modern HEMA game? Well that is simple. I think the sickle has tremendous value in our historical fencing game, especially for those that do dagger. I always describe the sickle as 80% dagger and 20% sword. That is how it fences in my opinion. It emphasizes a lot of control and during wrestling, despite Meyer showing it, you don't actually have to throw your opponent. A simple tug is enough to show, hey, I got you. It is a way to do dagger in a, in my opinion, somewhat better and more active way. Measure is a whole different beast. The sickle shape can sometimes trick you. Hand positions can change things dramatically. Will you be able to rake your opponent's arm and both of you are holding on tight? How you take a sickle with your sickle is important. Will you try to swipe it away or will you be safe and push your sickle forward to catch theirs? There's a lot of options in this game. 
And most importantly, it's fun. It's a physical activity of friends. And at the end of the day, you can say to yourself, hey, I did sickle today. At this point, I wish to thank my clubmate Daniel Suarez, and I wish to thank my fellow sickle fencer Dimitri Terhave. Both of them have given me valuable input during my sickle journey. And of course, a special thanks to Paulus Hectalmaya. You might have embezzled money, but if it was to fund these books, you did nothing wrong. Thank you.